Hey, praise the Lord, everybody. It's me, Jim. Hey, you got a few minutes? Why? Because I want to share some good news with you. All right, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. I know out in public, I, I talk with people and I'm busy, you're busy. Sometimes we're in a place where it's not, you know, the right place, the right time to really dig deep into the Word of God. But hey, I want to make a short video, just a few minutes, and really dig into this because this is, this is the Word of God. And this is the King James Bible version. All right, real quick here. This particular word, woo, man, I want to talk about this word, this entire video. This word is propitiation. It's used three times in the Bible, in the King James Bible. And according to the King James Bible dictionary, look up in, use any dictionary you want to, just do your own homework. But it basically means the act of appeasing wrath and conciliating the favor of an offended person. The act of propitions. Okay? Now, just with that definition, you might be saying, what does conciliating mean and what does propitions mean? I look those words up to the word propitions means representing favorable conditions. Okay? And real quick, facilitate that simply means to overcome the distrust or hostility of predicate win over and you all see the words reconcile favor goodwill to win or gain now let's get into the scriptures we're going to look at this word propitiation is very important and what i what i'm seeing is a lot of people in the church who study the bible and some outside of the church who don't study the Bible, when you talk about God's word, when you talk about these holy scriptures, a lot of times they don't understand the terminology. Okay? And it's not that they just don't believe, it's they don't understand. And it's hard to believe in something that you really don't understand. And so today, this word propitiation, I believe it's going to help you understand the scriptures and it should boost your faith. What is faith? It's simply taking God at his word. Let's read it. Romans chapter 3, verse 25. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. That's that word again. God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. Romans chapter 3, verse 25, we see here that God himself, God, creator of heaven and earth, the God of the Bible, he has already set up a way for you to escape his wrath. A way for you to make it into heaven. Okay? And it's through, if you see this, if we look at the verse with me, it's through faith in his blood, your faith resting in Jesus Christ, his blood that was shed at the cross. Yes, Calvary, the cross, all of your sins, past sins, present sins, future sins were paid in full. The debt and penalty. Okay, this word is also found in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. We're still talking about propitiation. Very important word. When you understand this word, when you read these scriptures, you should really it should boost your faith. Okay? And the point I'm going to make is here is that God himself, what Christ did for you, is enough. You don't have to add anything to it. You don't have to take anything away. Okay? You don't deserve it. You can't earn it. You can't give it. You can't lose it. This is a free gift and is simply based off of this word propitiation, which means God is satisfied. He is fully satisfied with what Christ accomplished on the cross. John chapter two, verse one through two. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate 
with the Father. It's good. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Notice, Jesus Christ is the advocate. It's not the pastor. It's not the pope. It's not a priest. It's not your mom. It's not your dad. It's not the government. It's not the president. It's Jesus Christ. He's the advocate with the Father. Verse 2. And he is the propitiation. There's that word again. He is the propitiation for our sins. Plural. And not for ours only. This is John talking to the Jews. But also for the sins of the whole world. Jesus Christ, the Savior, and this word propitiation, God can be fully satisfied. His wrath can be appeased simply by a person by faith alone relying exclusively on the shed blood of Jesus Christ at Calvary, him dying for all of our sins. Turn to 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 through 10. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that he might that we might live through him. God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Verse 10, herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation. There's that word again. For our sins. Most people get it that we are sinners, but most people don't understand that there is propitiation. There is satisfaction. God is saying, okay, I can justly forgive you. Let me pour out my grace, my mercy, all of your sins. I'll put it on my son and he will go to that cross, endure that cross. And at that cross, he paid for all of those sins. His death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. None can come to the Father except through me. Now, the word propitiation is also translated in Greek as the mercy seat. It's also translated, referred to as the mercy seat. You can read about that in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 5. But just to give you a little, a little knowledge on time past, back in the Old Testament days, in the Old Testament, there was a temple, the holy temple. And in the holies of holies, that's where that mercy seat was located. And once a year, the priests for Israel will go in with that blood of Israel's, their sacrifice. Okay, the, he will go in with their blood and he will offer it up. He will sprinkle the blood on that mercy seat. And God's justice will be appeased for one year. He did that once a year. Okay, and this was a shadow and a type of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he would do for us. Him being that high priest, he shed his own blood. He knew no sin, but he was made sin for us. And on that cross, he died for our sins. And God saying, that's the propitiation. I fully accept that. I am satisfied with that. Okay, Jesus Christ's death on the cross fully satisfied God's standard of perfection. All right, three more scriptures I want to share with you real quick. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 10 through 11. Now, some of you are Jewish out there. This should be in your Torah. Isaiah chapter 53. Christ was, it was prophesied that he will come. He came. He fulfilled the mission. Then from heaven, he saved the apostle Paul. Today, we are living in a new dispensation, the dispensation of grace. And from heaven, Christ revealed to Paul a new program. It's called the mystery program. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 through 8, it talks about the, the dispensation of the grace of God. It's very important. But way back in the Old Testament, we see here Isaiah 53, 
chapter uh, chapter three, chapter fifty three, verse ten through eleven. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering of sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. The, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. And he shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. That word propitiation, you also see that word satisfaction or satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Okay? Since the word of God tells us, the prophecy and also the mystery tells us that Jesus Christ is that propitiation. This is what God is fully accepting. And it also tells us in, in the book of, of, of the Apostle Paul, his 13 letters, he makes it very clear that we, sh we are not to add anything to this salvation. So, since God tells us that he is fully satisfied with Jesus Christ's full and complete payment of our sins, we should believe it and be strong in the faith. Okay? Coming down to the end here, Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. I know a lot of people might be saying or thinking, man, just believing, just believing that Christ died for all my sins and, you know, that's not enough. It is enough. It is enough. And quite frankly, that's the only way that you're going to be justified before righteous God. There's nothing that you can do or say that's good enough to please God. There's nothing you can do or say to keep the gift that God has given you. If you could lose it, you would. Look at Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. The faith of Jesus Christ is better than your faith. You take your faith and you place it in him, but he also had a faith that he knew what he was going to accomplish, that cross. He knew that his suffering, he knew he came to take away the sins of the entire world for those who believe. Even we, back to Galatians 2.16, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. If you talk to a lot of people, you talk about heaven, hell, immediately they go to talking about the performance that they do. And that performance is usually based on the law. Okay? Paul tells us that that law was designed to bring us to Christ, to bring us to the cross. After we accept the Savior, okay, the Bible says we're bought and sold with the price, we become His forever. Okay? And now we're no longer under the law, we're now under grace. We'll talk about those terminologies too. Uh, my last scripture here, Romans chapter 4, verse 5. But to him that worketh not. And see, it's very important. When it comes to God's salvation, when it comes to receiving it, <clears throat> no works is attached. Because this is a gift. And like a birthday gift or a graduation gift, you are not supposed to work for that or pay for that. It's supposed to be free. Okay, that's what grace really is. It's a free gift. It's undeserved favor. Romans chapter 4 verse 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. You, by taking your faith, we all have a measure of faith. Some people put their faith in Money, careers, relationships, things that can fail. But God wants you to put your faith in 
his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, his finished work at the cross, dying for all of your sins, paying the debt and the penalty of your sins. Verse 6, even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. I'm going to stop right there. Thank you for listening. Thank you for participating. The scriptures that I gave you, go back, read them, study it out. The terminologies that I gave you, propitiation, that's the word for today. It's very important because once you understand it, you realize that Christ shed blood at the cross. That alone, faith alone, no works. Now your good works, good works is not bad. Good works begin to happen after you get saved. But most people, most human beings feel, most religions feel that they have to do good works in order to get into this right standing with God. And God is saying, nope. It's all in my son and his finished work at the cross. That's why when Jesus died on that cross and before he died, he said, it is finished. He gives us a complete and free salvation. Join us next week. I'm going to try to do this once a week. I'm going to try my best to be faithful. Okay, and give me comments and give me questions here on Facebook, YouTube. Some of you have my cell phone. Get a hold of me. This is very important because your soul, your soul is the most important thing. And, and some of you are parents, your children. They need to know the truth and you need to teach them the truth, but you can't teach it if you don't know it. And, and, and it's not just knowing the scriptures, but understanding the terminology so you can make an informed decision so you can live this. Some of us have life insurance, which is important, but what I'm talking about is eternal life assurance. And the word of God, this is God's word. Like they say, you got two things. <laughs> His word, and he's not breaking either one of those. You know what I'm saying? God's word is true. God's word is proven. I don't have to defend the Bible. It defends itself. It's like that lion in a cage. You don't have to defend the lion, just let him out the cage. He'll defend himself. Join us next week. We're going to talk about the word atonement. Atonement is used 81 times in the King James Bible. And for your homework for next time is Romans chapter 5, verse 11. One scripture. Okay, and it's talking about the atonement. Okay, so contact me. Once again, I love you. I care about you. And hey, if I can make a quick video and send it out and if this will bring forth getting you thinking about God's word that's very important that's very important uh, today's date is uh, December the 12th 2016 this year alone I've five people in my life that I've known have died this year five people have died this year and I'm saying, hey, I'm going to do my best to share God's word. Because when you die, you can know today for sure where you're going to end up. Okay? And it's not based off of man's thinking and or your thinking or institutions or education. It really is the word of God. The word of God. This is the truth. Absolute truth. And God is letting you know what you need. He's letting you know who is, who is the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ.
I'll end by saying, have you, has anyone ever loved you enough to ask you a simple question? Do you know for sure where you're going to spend all eternity? If not, I love you enough to say, hey, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, his shed blood at Calvary, his finished work at the cross, no works of, of your own, just believing in him, accepting him, and this new relationship that you can have with him. That's how you know for sure. His word tells us that he died for all of your sins, all of them. And this propitiation, this propitiation, God is saying he's fully satisfied with what Jesus Christ did for you. I'll stop there. I love you. God bless you.